Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here Tuesday now, the 26th of September, 2023. Probably going to be a pretty short update today. Yes, we do have a busy pattern out there, but no, we don't have any threats to land. Unlike a year ago when we were preparing for a very powerful and destructive Hurricane Ian, even though there is some unsettled weather in the vicinity of Florida coming up out of the Caribbean, nothing at all like the pattern that we had last year that gave us that very formidable and historic hurricane for our friends in southwest Florida across the peninsula and then across a good deal of the southeast as you probably recall it's been quite a busy year since then a lot has happened right absolutely yes it is busy out there but nothing to worry about for land interests for the time being we do have Philippe Philippe is struggling with wind shear. Hey, that's what it says right there. Philippe continues to struggle. And then we have Invest Area 91L, which should become a hurricane. We thought maybe Philippe would become a hurricane, but the pattern out here changed, and the upper level winds became less favorable. So despite the very warm water temperatures that reside across this area, the upper level winds were not favorable. So uh, shear has been the main thing with keeping Philippe in check. We can see the red area here for 91L. Yeah, we're going to want to watch this just to see if the pattern gets kind of weird in the Western Atlantic. I don't think it'll be a, a threat to the Caribbean, but unless these things are already on their way out, you never take your eyes off of them over here. You know, just a little word of caution. And I think that's just common sense. I mean, it's still way out here at a fairly low latitude in the central tropical Atlantic. And until it curves away, we're going to want to keep an eye on things. More than likely, the pattern will hold where nothing will impact land directly. But you never say never. And that's just that's a risky thing to do. You don't become too deterministic, right? Looking at the satellite imagery, there is the low-level center of Philippe. And the disheveled convection around it, what little convection there is. We do have some deep moisture streaming up in towards Florida here. Obviously nothing like what we had last year with Ian. And we've got this big old long stretched out frontal boundary all across and this kind of a jet stream deal up here. The high latitudes and then somewhere tucked in here is the remnants of Ophelia, believe it or not, kind of still plaguing the area. I said that yesterday. And then we have 91L down here that looks like it's going to go on to develop. And the computer models generally like this system. It's pretty close in proximity of course to Philippe and we'll have to see do they dance around each other do they influence each other I mean they will because they're pretty close but it looks like 91L here will become the dominant feature and it is at a pretty low latitude down here so we're going to want to watch this closely over the next five to seven days you never know where it ends up and again until it is turning out and away for sure we don't discount it a hundred percent that's all. Very common sense kind of stuff, right? Now, looking at the vorticity signature, this really helps to explain things. And uh, look at that long area of energy stretched out across the Gulf. When you see things stretched out like that, that means they're not going to develop. The energy is not bundling. There's some bundled energy, part of it kind of the leftovers of Ophelia. There's the vorticity signature of Philippe. There's 91L. And then here's all this energy just stretched out over thousands of miles across the Atlantic. So nothing over here close to home, so to speak, or this home if you happen to be down here, uh, where the energy is trying to bundle together. So you look at the satellite and you say, wow, that's some interesting stuff brewing over there in the Caribbean. But you really have to look sort of underneath the hood as the expression goes. And there's a little tiny piece of energy right there but nothing that looks like it's getting organized. The computer models don't really show much, so I am not too concerned with it. But the overall pattern of sending moisture up towards Florida means that it could stay wet and unsettled there and kind of rainy and whatnot. Probably not even very much in the way of gusty winds or anything, but just kind of an unsettled pattern. So looking at the two different models, we'll take a look at the GFS and then the Euro here and see what they are suggesting over the next several days. I guess that's one way to put it. Here are the various and sundry players. We have Philippe here, 91L here. There's that surface trough in the Gulf. And a tiny little piece of energy right there. 
kind of a mid-layer ridge sitting out over the Atlantic, not too stout, but not completely weak and non-existent either. Otherwise, these systems would just curve off like this. So if we put things into motion, and let's just scroll this out to the next week, 168 hours. You see what happens. Look at Philippe there on the left. Philippe dies away. And then what would be Rena, R-I-N-A, comes to life. This would be Rena right here eventually. We'll put an R for Rena. There's the leftovers of Philippe. And then these are just little mid-latitude systems not to worry about at all. Um, and we'll just have to see how the pattern is. If these aren't here, then Rena could be stronger and more west with time. There's a lot of different scenarios that could play out. But over the next week, nothing to worry about. And of course, that gets us into the first part of October here. This is valid Tuesday morning, the third day of the 10th month. All right, so lots to still track. This would be a big ace producer, but that's about it. You know, the usual rip currents from the waves that will come out from it eventually, and we'll see what happens. Now, the Euro, very similar in its evolution. And again, this is the EC fast, so we only get 24 hour increments. But let's look at this also out to the next seven days, and let's see how things stack up. Now, the Euro basically gets rid of the energy of Philippe over here. And it's got Rena to be a little bit closer to the islands. Let's take the telestration away, if we can, and go back to the GFS. GFS is more north, Euro more south. Not much with Philippe on either of them, so we don't have to really worry about that. And then I like to just kind of look and see what could happen later. You know, we could cheat and go out to 10 days, but let's just start at day 7 here and look at the 500 millibar height anomalies. And you got some pretty low heights through here, so this would suggest that our, that our system here, Rena, would try to eventually find its way out. But again, if these aren't here, and this comes back over the top stronger, then this could get more west than you know we're really comfortable with. Because again, this is a week out, seven days. A lot can change. There could be more troughing. You know, you know, come on, you know how this works. But it is something that we need to watch. It is still hurricane season and we will need to pay attention just because it's there. So pretty short update for the update side of things. Now I want to show you something. This came off of our Patreon, and there was also a YouTube comment about this relating to Ophelia. So Ophelia had a pressure down to about 980, 981, roughly, something like that, near landfall, or it was measured out over the ocean, and it was not a hurricane. Remember, uh, Ophelia ended up as a 70 mile per hour tropical storm at landfall. And they also, the question, I believe is from the same person here from Chuck on YouTube as well, kind of posing the question about, I'm trying to make my telestrator to go away and then me to, me to come back. Come on, me. Maybe, it'll, oh, I'm, I'm hitting the wrong button. I was hitting H and I should hit G. I'm using a program that somebody asked me this on YouTube as well. It's called Ink to Go. I-N-K, the number two, G-O, and it's got these little hot spots on the keyboard, and sometimes I lose track of things. So let's just focus on Chuck's observation and question. So 980 on the pressure, wind was 70. Why didn't the wind ramp up? Because 980 is getting down there. You could think maybe an 80, 85, maybe 90 mile an hour hurricane with a pressure in the low 980s. Let's just assume it was 980 millibars, all right? a nice even number and normally you would say yeah that could give us a formidable solid category one hurricane well why was Ophelia just at 70 miles per hour now of course we do know that it did cause some damage mainly from storm surge a few power outages that kind of thing and it's still menacing or plaguing or whatever word you want to use parts of the Northeast so it did have impacts but with that low pressure why didn't it come in stronger wind wise the key is convection, or the thunderstorm activity. In a stronger hurricane, or a system that's transitioning and growing from a tropical storm into a hurricane, you have to have deeper thunderstorms, more intense convection around that eye with the lower pressure to help get those winds to come down to the surface. There were probably, and I mean I would be certain of this, I didn't check the recon data and like I'm not on top of it while we're out and about doing the field work 
uh, like under a microscope, folks at Storm 2K will, even on our Discord, people are paying attention to that kind of stuff in greater detail. At flight level, which is usually around 700 millibars in the atmosphere, several thousand feet up, you're going to get hurricane force wind, you know? But when they do the drop sound and it comes all the way down to the surface and it's measuring the profile of the atmosphere and the vertical, unless the deep thunderstorm activity is there, the deep convection, those winds aloft at flight level typically don't reach the surface as efficiently. There's not that mechanism of very heavy rain to drag that wind down to the surface. And Marcel and I, and if you were tuning into our live feed on YouTube from New Bern all the way up to Washington, we never saw any of that on the ground where you have those deep stabs of wind and rain where you're just like in awe and everything just kind of blasts through there and it's like being in a car wash. We didn't see that. So the shortest answer, the easiest way to explain this, Ophelia was more shallow in its convection. There was some upward motion to it, some thunderstorm activity, had a little bit of lightning. Some of that was due to convergence over land, like a whole bunch of elephants tumbling, tumbling over each other if a herd of them is going forward and the front end loses their balance or whatever, and then the rest of the herd just starts tumbling. Frictional convergence probably did some upward motion stuff and gave us some lightning and thunder. But otherwise, Ophelia was fairly shallow convectively, and therefore those winds weren't able to make it to the surface, despite the 980 millibar pressure we measured in our vehicle, my Tacoma, the crowdfunded Tacoma, I might add. Thank you all very much. Our Tacoma. Uh, we got a 983 pressure in New Bern and over in Bridgeton. Um, we drove all around trying to you know, find the lowest pressure. And no, there was never an instance, a few gusts here and there, but nothing like I've seen before in strong hurricanes or even a solid Category 1 hurricane. So at landfall, if they do not upgrade it in post-analysis, that makes total sense to me. Ophelia, a shallow, it sounds like a character flaw, right? It was convectively shallow. Sometimes the Hurricane Center will say convectively challenged, and that's true. Um, Irene in 2011 had a very low pressure, was convectively challenged, but it had a huge wind field, and it was very slow moving, and it put a 10-foot surge on some of the sound areas like Rodanthe. There's Lisa's Pizza out there that had a lot of water. So yes, it's all about the convection. All right, I turned out you know, to talk a little bit more than I wanted, but I wanted to explain that. Thanks for the question and the comment and so forth on both Patreon and YouTube. Again, I think it came from Chuck, um, and I do appreciate that. I like to I like to answer questions when at least hopefully I know the answers to those questions, right? All right, let's get this online for you. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. As always, thanks for tuning in to me and what I have to talk about. I am Mark Suddeth from all of us at Hurricane Track. Thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow.